Do you know the most abundant organic molecule on earth is a polysaccharide, cellulose that is present in plants? Hi friends, in this video let us understand polysaccharides, their structure, classification and function within 5 to 10 minutes. Let's begin with the term polysaccharides. Poly means many, whereas saccharides means sugar or sugar units. Let's take one example, glycogen. Glycogen, as you see, it is made up of glucose units, many glucose units, that is joined by alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage and alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. So this is the carbon-4 and this is the carbon-1. Therefore, the linkage is called as alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage. And at the branching points, there is alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. So there are hundreds of glucose units that makes glycogen. So polysaccharides can be defined as long chains of monosaccharides that is joined by glycosidic bonds. Now let us see the classification. Polysaccharides are broadly classified into homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides. Homopolysaccharides are made up of single type of monosaccharides. It can be further classified into storage and structural homopolysaccharide. Let's begin with the storage homopolysaccharide. First one is the starch. Starch is the storage food in plants. It's a homopolysaccharide that is made up of two components, amylose, a linear chain, and amylopectin, a linear chain, and there are many branching points. So the linkage, as you see, there are two linkages in linear chain. It is alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage, whereas in amylopectin, there are two linkages, alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkages, and also at the branching points, there is alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. So its semicrystalline structure allows for efficient energy storage and controlled release in the form of glucose present in rice, plants, cereals, etc. The second one is the glycogen. Glycogen is a storage food in animals. It's also a homopolysaccharide that is made up of glucose units, D-glucose units that is joined by alpha-1,4 glycosidic linkage and alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage. This glycogen is very much branched compared to starch. It is stored in liver and muscles. And the third one is the inulin. Inulin is made up of fructose monomers. As you see, it is made up of 5-carbon fructose monomers, made up of a pentose sugar that is linked by beta-2,1 glycosidic bond. This is beta-2,1 glycosidic bond. So it's not easily digested by humans. So it's a dietary fiber, but it is a favorite food for gut bacteria thus indirectly promote gut health. Widely present in roots and rhizomes of bananas, onion, chicory root, etc. The fourth one is the dextran. Dextran is a homopolysaccharide that is produced by bacteria and fungi. It is a homopolysaccharide that is made up of glucose units linked by alpha-1,6 glycosidic linkage and also alpha-1,3 glycosidic linkage. Unlike starch or glycogen, it has a linear structure with very few branching it is used as a blood plasma expander, used as a thickening agent in food and cosmetic industries. Now moving into structural polysaccharide. Structural polysaccharide provides structure or rigidity to structures, living cells or living structures. First one is cellulose. Cellulose is the most abundant organic molecule on earth. Plant cell wall is made up of cellulose. It is a tough homopolysaccharide composed of glucose units, as you see, linked by beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage. Here the linkage is beta-1,4 glycosidic linkage. So you can refer the video on difference between alpha and beta here. It forms the main structural component of plant cell wall. Its strong hydrogen bonds and linear chains give it remarkable strength and rigidity, providing support and stability to plants present in wood, paper, cotton, etc. The second one is a lignin that is widely present in woody plants. It's a complex polymer made up of phenylpropanoid units, as you see, and methoxy substituted phenylpropane units, as you see. This you can see the methyl group here. It is just like a glue that strengthens and reinforces the plant's cell wall, especially woody plants. The next one is a chitin. Chitin is a homopolysaccharide that is present in fungal cell wall and also insects exoskeleton that acts just like an armor. It's a homopolysaccharide that is made up of N-acetyl glucosamine monomers that is linked by beta-1,4 glycosidic bond. 
It's a very tough and fibrous material that forms the exoskeletons of insects, crustaceans and fungal cell wall. Now let us discuss heteropolysaccharides. Heteropolysaccharides, as you see, are made up of different types of monosaccharide units. Can be classified into non-nitrogenous and nitrogenous heteropolysaccharide. Let's begin with non-nitrogenous heteropolysaccharide, agar. Agar is obtained from red algae or seaweeds of genus Crassularia and Gelidium primarily. It's a heteropolysaccharide that is made up of agarose. As you see, it's a neutral polymer and agaropectin, this one, a sulfated charged polymer. Agarose is a linear polysaccharide, mostly galactose that are linked in straight chain without much branches. It gives the gelling ability, whereas agarapectin is very much branched with a mix of galactose and other sugars and sulfate groups. As you see here, there are sulfate groups and it provides the texture and it is involved in stabilizing the agarose gel. As we know, agar is widely used in food and cosmetic industries. And also, we know that in research in plant tissue culture media and in bacterial culture media, stabilizing gelling agent is the agar. The next one is the gums. Gums are diverse heteropolysaccharides that is extracted from plant seeds and bark like acacia, then the gum is called as gum arabica. There are sand and gum and different types of gums. Their composition varies but typically includes a mix of monosaccharides like galactose, arabinose, raminose, etc. And that varies with species and different types of gums. And the next one is the hemicellulose. Hemicellulose is a heteropolysaccharide that is often formed by five or six monosaccharide units. It acts like a glue binding cellulose fibers together providing additional strength and rigidity to plant tissues. As you see, it's made up of silos, glucose, galactose, arabinose, glucuronic acid. So five to six monomeric residues that are combined to form hemicellulose, also a component of plant cell wall. The next one is the pectin. Pectin is present as in the middle lamella of plants, plant cell wall. It is also present in fruits. It's a heteropolysaccharide primarily composed of methylated polygalactouronic acid, as you see this methyl group, that is linked by 1,4 glycosidic bonds. And other sugars are also present like graminose, arabinose, galactose, silose, etc. It is abundant in apple and citrus fruits and also present in the middle lamella of plant cell wall. Now the final one, that is the nitrogenous heteropolysaccharide, glycosaminoglycans, that is present in animal cells. It's a heteropolysaccharide that is made up of two sugar molecules, N-acetyl glucosamine, the modified sugar that provides the backbone of the chain, and also N-acetyl glucosamine, then another sugar that is depending on a specific glycosaminoglycans type. This can be glucuronic acid, galactose, N-acetyl glucosamine, etc. So based on that, there are different GHEs or glycosaminoglycans. It has many roles involved in cell signaling, lubrication, and providing structure, uh, suppose the case of hyaluronic acid, it's a GAG that is found in joints and skin provides cushioning and lubrication, whereas heparin are used as an anticoagulant, then chondroitin sulfate that is present in cartilage and bone provides structure and shock absorption capacity, uh, then there is keratin sulfide that is present in cornea and brain, it contributes to cell signaling and also in development, and finally, dermatin sulfate that is found in skin, blood vessels and lungs and has an essential role in wound healing and inflammation. So there are different types of glycosaminoglycans. And finally, let us summarize. Polysaccharides are long chains of monosaccharides that is joined by glycosidic bond. It can be classified into homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides. Homo means made up of a single type of monomeric units, whereas heteropolysaccharides are made up of different types of monosaccharide units. Homopolysaccharides can be further classified into storage and structural. Storage includes starch in plants as reserve food, glycogen reserve food in animals, inulin, which is made up of fructose that is present in roots, rhizomes, then dextran that is present in bacteria and fungus. All are storage polysaccharides. Structural polysaccharides that provides structure, especially cellulose, the most abundant organic molecule uh, that is present in plant cell wall. Then lignin also is a heteropolysaccharide that supports woody plants. Then chitin that forms the fungal cell wall and insects exoskeleton and also crustaceans exoskeleton. 
Then heteropolysaccharides can be classified into non-nitrogenous and nitrogenous. Non-nitrogenous includes agar that is obtained from seaweeds, then comes that is from plant seeds and bark, then hemicellulose that is present in plant cell wall, pectin that is present in uh, middle lamella of plant cell wall and also in fruits, uh, plant citrus fruits. And finally, nitrogenous polysaccharide, the most important one is glycosaminoglycans that is present in animal cells. There are different types like heparin, chondritin sulfate, dermatin sulfate, etc. with crucial roles in cell signaling, lubrication, providing structure, wound healing and inflammation. So that is about the classification of polysaccharide. Hope you are benefited from this video. Take care. Stay blessed. Thank you so much. You are with biologyexamsfurry.com.